and joined by Olivia, who's living in Mexico right now, but you've lived in a, a whole plethora of places. You're originally from France, lived in the southern part of America, and then moved to New York in the northeast, and then since then gone further north and further east, and gone to Quebec in, in uh, Canada and Montreal, kind of went even further east and just travelled around East Asia and a bit of the Caribbean and Latin America. We just finished recording a, a much longer episode. If you do want to hear all about life of all those places, then please do go check out that podcast. It should be a, a link right now somewhere around here. And without further ado, we can get into the quick fire questions. What's your favourite place you've lived? My thought to, to get work done while exploring an exotic culture, Bangkok to relax um, either Ubud in Bali or uh, some places in Mexico we mentioned, Mayuan or Sayulita. Amazing. And great reasons as well. The next question is, what's your favorite international food? To be the Thai food, the pineapple chicken and mango sticky rice. So they actually carve out a pineapple and put rice and chicken plus the pineapple for the pineapple chicken and the mango sticky rice as mango and rice and some cream that puts everything uh, together that highlights everything. Wow. So did you have that time when you were in Thailand? Yes, absolutely. Thai food in the UK did travel. It is a lot of Thai restaurants, but it's to see the nuances within that and the authenticness of eating it out of an hollow yeah, I mean, if you're in North America, you can just look at the menu of your Thai restaurant to see whether they serve genuine food by see whether they serve mango sticky rice as a dessert or not. Uh, and then what's your favorite international tradition? I mean, I love cacao ceremony, ec ecstatic dance, which comes from pre-Hispanic pre uh, Latin America. There's a certain connection to, to yourself. And you can... You can find similar traditions in uh, in Bali. There's a place called the Pyramid of Chi in Ubud that I like a lot. But in various places, they have this cacao ceremony where they serve cacao. They have you to connect with yourself, have intentions, and then ecstatic dance where you can dance without any set script. Um, yeah, I enjoy that a lot. Wow, well, yeah, but one for me so some research on that for school the next question is what's your favorite thing about living abroad the sense of discovery and freedom the sense of of feeling um yeah feeling something new discovering and just enjoying something new i i like i like to to discover things to have a feeling of novelty <laughs> perfect perfect and then what's your best homesickness remedy? Well, you can usually find something that reminds you of home. Go to a given restaurant, international restaurant, or stay connected with, with another group of expats. Especially now, it's, it's almost a danger, actually. Um, if you're a digital nomad and you revolve in this circle, you're almost in a bubble and you don't really connect with the local culture. A few decades ago, even if you were an English teacher and you would be working in a local school, uh, teaching English to locals, you would be much more prone to homesickness, um, but at the same time, you would discover local culture a lot more than with the facilities we have nowadays. The hardest thing about living abroad. I mean, figuring how things work, whether it's customs or to interact with people or whether it's more technical things when it comes to immigration, banking, etc., or to get goods delivered to where you are. But it doesn't come across as a huge distance to me. Um, what, what's the best way to trust living at road? Well, that, that's the one that I mentioned earlier. Uh, jump, jumping off the cliff and building your wings on the way down, which uh, can, for better or for worse, describe a lot of um, what life brings our way. And so staying with, staying on the safe side doesn't really lead to growth. 
No, it's a very good point. You, uh, you don't grow in your community. And then what's your best way of making new friends? Just social events. You um, just talking to people, going to social events. You will go. Uh, Facebook have a, um, has a page for events. Many events will be posted there. And you just go do something you like and talk with people. Uh, that's a great, but one thing I do back from that is if you don't buy the events, you can always host an event. Second one, what might be helped by your opening of what? What's the best thing to do in your new city? The best thing to do, just warm the world, just walk randomly, discover new restaurants, discover the beach, discover the places that are active. Yeah. Right. And then my last question, what's the best expat life hack? Expat life hack. Well, if you're traveling a lot, I found that flying west is much easier on your jet lag than flying east. If you fly west, um, you will have a bad night of sleep because you'll be in an economy class seat in the plane, but you will have a longer night. So all in all, you will have enough, you will have the same amount of rest. You'll have less quality, longer night. But if you fly east, not only will you have a lower quality of sleep, but you will also have a shorter night, which will compound onto each other. That's really good. I don't want it. It makes it be incredibly practical. So hopefully that's helping people a lot. Maybe you just keep going west and then you get back. You just miss a whole day. Nice. Um, thank you so much for joining the podcast. Please do go check out Olivia's website. And I'll leave a link in the show description for that. If you do have any, I guess, US tax return assistance is required, then do, do check that website out. And if you do want to denounce your new citizenship, also please do go check out that website. Awesome. And then we'll see you next time. The expat part.